Hey you guys, okay, we are back here with part five of the contract and I am rolling this particular story out a little bit fast. Y'all, my glasses are blurry. There's a glare back here um, because I've moved my camera more so this way. Hold on y'all. I'll try to keep my, there we go. So this is part five. Now honey, I am fit to be tied because truth be told, I've already done this story time and I recorded it and there's something wrong with my file so I'm having to redo all this again. I'm trying to think how part five went. All right, so part four we left off with um, Tierra has gotten engaged and she shares news with her manager Sharon but Sharon lets Tierra know that you should talk to this woman Mary Renthrop and Tierra is confused and Excuse me, Sharon makes it known that that is actually Paul's mother. And Paul's mother did not die. She is well alive. She's actually been staying at the Sierra Medical Ward for the past four or five years in central LA. Okay? So Tierra takes this news very shockingly. She holds on to the information for a while. She's not sure if she should, she's not sure if she's even able to visit this woman. Uh, and a part of her is too afraid to really know the truth, right? So later on that weekend, she goes over to Pa's place because again, they are now engaged and they spend a lot of time together planning the wedding, etc. So Tiara decided enough of the secrets and lies. I'm going to go ahead and confront Paul about this new information I have. Now y'all, I think I'm pretty good at storytelling, but what I'm really bad about is being very detailed and I will will try to take a breather and give y'all more detail, especially when it comes to how these people look like. So one of y'all, hey girl, asked me what does Paul look like? Paul looks like Boris Kudrow. He could be a stand-in for Boris Kudrow, but he's a little bit darker, yes. And Tiara looks like, I thought about this. Y'all remember um, Keisha from the movie Belly? She played DMX's girlfriend, Chocolate Sister, yes. Um, I think she also played in this movie from the 90s called A Love in Bronx where she was in love with an Italian guy. Didn't she play in that movie? Anyway, she's a beautiful sister. Dark, dark chocolate. That's what Tiara looks like. And now you know what, what Boris Paul looks like. <laughs> so anyway, Tiara, T decides enough is enough. Tired of the secrets and lies. I'm going to go ahead and let him know that I found out that his mother is alive. So they're having dinner and Tiara wanted to be very careful how she addresses this because she doesn't want him to think that she's been going behind his back because this is information that was disclosed to her. Not the other way around, if you know what I mean. So they're having dinner and she's like, you know what, Paul? Um, I know that this is a very touchy subject for you, but I really would like to know more about your family, your mo your mother, your father, um, especially now that we're engaged. I think it's important that we really, you know, get to know each other. It's what they should have been done and doing a long time ago, girl. So anyway... Paul looks at her right and he's giving her that same look like I know that you know so I'm just gonna go ahead and tell the truth right so he's like you know what Tiara I want to first apologize girl here we go with the apologies narcissistic men I want to go ahead and apologize um my mother is alive and she's actually been staying at the sierra medical ward for the past five years that's when he lays on another piece of information he's like and actually i've been um visiting her monthly and tiara's like wow she's like well why did you lie to me about it he's like well what am i supposed to say my mama had a nervous breakdown and ended up in a mental institution for the past five years and tiara looked at him she's like yes you don't know how I would have reacted to that piece of news. I would rather you be honest with me than lie about it. And he looks at her, you know, he's like, you're absolutely right. I'm so sorry. He's like, for now on, I won't keep any secrets from you. And she's like, okay. She's a little reluctant about this because again, she's having to approach him about yet another lie. So he's like, okay. Um, he said, well, actually, since, you know, we brought it up. I do have some good news to share. My mother is actually being released in a couple of more weeks here. And Tiara is shocked by this. Now, she's the type of person, she, baby, her face speaks before she even says it. So, 
<laughs> Paul can tell that she's a little shocked. He's like, I know I can see the shock on your face, but I would love for you to meet my mother. And I think this will be a, a great start. Um, to get you know some of this stuff behind us and let's move forward with nothing but honesty and truth right so she looks at him she's like absolutely paul i would love to meet your mother it's well overdue since now i find her ass is alive you know that's what she's thinking so anyway y'all weeks leading up to paul's mother um being released now she has to be released to a family member she just can't you know go out willy-nilly by herself she has to be released to a loved one etc family member excuse me so paul is sharing more information about his family um sharing more information about his mother excuse me and Tiara is also noticing a change in Paul's, a, a part of him that she's never seen before. He typically can come up as a very, I don't want to say calculated person. He's a very confident person. He's sure of himself. He rarely double guesses. Um, he's in control. He knows exactly what he wants. He has a plan A, B, and C. But lately, she notices he's been making mistakes. Um, his appearance is even a little disheveled. And so, she just talked it up to him being stressed out. You know, even though he's seen his mom monthly, this is the first time she's been home, right? So, Paul also reveals to uh, Tiara that his mother stayed with him and his first wife when she was still, when she was out and about. And at first, Chastity felt like this was a little odd, but hey, Paul has a huge estate and maybe he just wanted all his family under one, under one roof. Nothing wrong with that, right? All right, you guys, so the Friday le leading up to when his mother is released and Paul is, again, running around nervously, uh, dark-skinned Boris Kudrow running around nervously, making sure everything is in place. There's tons of staff there. And Paul ends up inviting Georgia, a.k.a. Queen Richard, um, the tall, thin man. I don't have a name for him, so he's still the tall, thin man. A couple of friends, you know, close friends, that knew about his mother, right? I think it's very odd, though, and Tierra thinks it's very odd, excuse me, that no one really told her about the mother. Maybe they assumed she already knew that, that she was alive, but According to Sharon, Paul lets people know that his mother is dead. So anyway, y'all, moving forward, it's the Friday that his mother is released. Paul and his driver goes to go pick up his mother. And Tierra's rating up in the, one of the guest bedrooms nervously. And that's when she could feel, you know, you can feel someone looking at you. And she turns around and she sees Georgia in the doorway looking at her. And so Tierra turns around. She's like, oh, hey, Miss Georgia. She's like, you know what? I'm so nervous. How do you think I look? And Georgia looks at her. She's like, oh, honey, you look divine. She's just going to love you. She's going to eat you right up. And so Tierra feels good about that, right? So the time has come and Paul arrives back at the house with his mother. She walks in and Tierra is shocked at the appearance of her of his mother. This woman looks like she has never missed a beat. Doesn't look like she spent the last four or five years in a mental institution. Um, she's a very fair-skinned woman with short curly hair, um, light eyes. If Tierra didn't know any better, she would have thought she was Latino. Okay, she's Latino, Puerto Rican. Um, she wasn't even sure she was a sister until until she opened up her mouth and she's like oh yeah she's she's a sister so um paul turns around nervously and says mom i would like for you to finally meet my fiance tiara and so the mom whips around and she's like oh you're the young woman who paul's been chattering about all these months she's like well give me a hug honey so she grabs tiara tiara was a little awkward because she's like i'm not sure if i should hug her but she goes ahead and hugs the woman back right so Rosa comes in and she announces that dinner is ready. And so they all go into the formal dining room and prepare to have dinner. Everyone is laughing, sharing old stories. Again, most of these people that Paul invited knew of his mother. And Tierra is just sitting back looking at everyone and join the conversation because you know she really doesn't know these are Paul's friends and she knows that eventually they will become her friends but at this point she's just sitting back and enjoying the conversation right so eventually people start to trickle off and leave after dinner um Georgia gets up and kiss the thin man and so at this point the only people that are there that are left there is Georgia 
Georgia ass is always so child. Georgia, aka Richard, Tierra Paul, Paul's mother. And so Paul is like, would you guys, are you up for a late cocktail? Georgia said, oh honey, you know I'm always up for a late cocktail. So they <laughs> go up to the library and Georgia sits at the piano, starts playing some tune and Paul's mom is sitting next to Georgia. So Tierra has made herself comfortable in the couch and, um, you know, Paul turned around to Tierra because he really hasn't had a chance to talk to her because he's been catching up with his other friends and his mom, right? So he's like, um, he's like, so how are you doing, honey? Are you okay? And Tierra's like, yeah, I'm fine. You know, I'm just enjoying the conversation. It seems like you guys were really close and with your mommy and all. And that's when Paul looks at his mom. He's like, yeah, my mom was always the life of the of the party and then he kind of looks at her and gets quiet and he says she still is and that's when he's just staring at his mother and tiara was like okay so honey she does one of these fake yawns to indicate that she ready to go right and so paul turns around he said oh i'm so sorry baby so you want my driver to take you home are you okay she's like yeah that would be fine he's like you know what actually why don't you just stay the night? It's pretty late, you know, I don't want you out. And you know, my driver would take care of you, but why don't you just go ahead and spend the night? Tierra's like, are you sure with your mother here? I mean, he's like, we're engaged, Tierra, your family. He's like, yeah, I'll just go ahead and get Rosa to sit you up, set you up upstairs. So Paul leaves the room, um, talks to Rosa, and she eventually goes off to bed, honey. Everyone eventually goes back to bed, and she gets settled into one of the guest bedrooms and falls asleep. He is awakened with shouting and she you know wrestles out of her sleep leans up and she tries to hear what room is coming from it's coming from paul's room which is over to the left hand side so she can hear arguing and it sounds like paul and someone else it's a female's voice so tiara tiptoes out of bed she starts walking slowly towards paul um towards Paul room. This is an old house, so it makes a lot of noise, and so you gotta be careful, right? You know, everything's creaking and cracking, girl. So she can hear Paul and his mother arguing. Now, Tiara's ass is nose, and she figures since she's the fiance about to be his wife next year, she must know what the hell they're arguing about at like one o'clock in the morning. So she tiptoes around. Paul's door is kind of open, so Tierra peer peers inside and it's his mother and you could tell she's been drinking all night so she's very loose so the mother is in front of the fireplace and she turns around she's like well you should have just went ahead and make sure she got home and paul was like but mom you know she's my fiance i wanted to make sure she's okay so why not have her spend the night and tiara i'm sorry and the mom was like i can't believe you have that hussy to stick <laughs> child these old bitter women I can't believe you had that hussy to spend the night my first night back he's like i'm so sorry mother that's when tiara notices something changed in paul almost like he becomes this he's not the confident man that he that she knew and had grown to love and he looks down in his hands and he's like i'm so sorry mom she said well you sorry well you know what to do to make me feel better that's when Paul looks at her. Now, Paul has been sitting down in one of the couches all this time. And so he puts his drink down, walks over to the mother. The mother undoes her robe. She has on this negligee, this lingerie underneath. Paul grabs his mother by the waist and kisses her smack dab in the middle of her. Tiara leans back and it's like, <gasps> She cannot believe what she just saw. She leans back and that's when she hears a noise behind her. She turns around and there's Georgia who has also stepped out of her room and she does shh. Tiara's disgusted. She runs back to her room, grabs her stuff and call a cab to go home. That's part five, y'all.